can't eat them. <laughs> Someone needs a stitch. <laughs>
and it's kind of our little safe haven. So we have a quiet place to return to if we need a break during the day and, you know, at the night when you're just done. <laughs> you have a place where you could go to and take a shower and get cleaned up and go to bed and not have to worry about any more chaos. Uh, it's also really important to both of us that we stay hydrated and we eat properly since we both have stomach conditions. We bring food to the con with us that we can both eat and we bring plenty of bottled water so we can stay, stay, yeah, uh, stay properly hydrated. It's really important. I'll drink water. Drink water! Drink water! Another one we use is we make a lot of lists. We love lists. lists are good. We make lists of lists we need to make. <laughs> That's not a lie. Uh, yeah. <laughs> lists of lists. So before each con, we make a big master list, and it has uh, it starts with a packing list that's broken down by day and costume. <laughs> so hopefully we don't forget things, but we still do. It's great. Uh, we also in a different city. Yeah, it's great. Uh, we have a schedule of panels and photo shoots and things we want to do at the con uh, with times and locations, so we know what we're kind of doing. And we have lists of. Oh, everything. everything. Hmm. Big, big, like, photo shoot five list. page master list before yeah. each con. It helps us stay organized. And um, so we do plenty, plenty of planning in advance. Uh, <laughs> another thing we like to do is have an exit strategy in mind, just in case we do have a crisis situation, which we're fortunate to not have had. But we started valeting the car, so if something should arise, we could call down and have the car ready at a moment's notice and get out of here if we need to. Uh, and another really, really important one is medications. If you are on medications on a daily routine or if you are on them uh, on an as-needed basis, have them with you. Hold each other accountable to take them on time when, you know, whenever you need them. And that'll, I mean, help you live your life and get through the day. It'll help regulate, especially at a con. Yeah. Especially at a con with how chaotic it can be and how, <clears throat> how much you can get overexcited and involved in everything, it's important to regulate. So, um, One of my things that I do whenever I'm having a panic attack is that I, self, I do positive self-talking. I tell myself I'm grounded, that I'm with friends, that I'm here, and, it, and I, I do my coping mechanisms. And another thing that I really love are, are soothing objects. I know squishies are really popular right now and that um, ASMR kind of squish down and rise up and sometimes they have scents in them and scents can be a wonderful wonderful thing because they can bring you back to positive memories in a positive moment in your life and so it can help you cope with that moment of panic of anxiety of pain and my favorite favorite self-soothing object is my teddy bear Dean and he is fuzzy, he's a Build-A-Bear, my boyfriend is a silly brain, heart, nose thing, he's a very serious guy, so it has a wonderful memory connected to it, and whenever I hug him, he smells like cupcakes. Aww. Right on. Uh, and some of the ones that I personally use is, uh, I'm really big on cleaning, so we will, we will enter our hotel room, and I will clean it, I will take out my Clorox wipes, and I will clean it top to bottom. Uh, you will not get concrete with her. You will not. It will not happen. No. <laughs> um, and I like to, at the end of each con day, I like to just take a real nice hot shower and kind of wash the day off. And it makes me feel so much better about life. <laughs> and uh, I really like having my own towel in the bathroom. <laughs> a towel that no one else touches it. No one, it hasn't been on the floor. It doesn't have anyone else's makeup on it. It's just kind of my personal towel that kind of gives me peace of mind. And I also really like to use music. I'm really big on Broadway soundtracks because the lyrics tend to be very poignant and storytelling. So if I'm in, you know, kind of an anxious or bad mood, I've had a rough day, I listen to some nice little show tunes. <laughs> and they're great. They, they're really good at kind of taking me out of that moment and putting me into a better one. So let's talk about recognizing the moment whenever you're in it and, and taking inventory and being your own advocate. In the moment, it can be chaotic, there can be stress, anxiety, physical pain, nausea, and it can be really hard to recognize what your body's going through, what your mind's going through. And it's important to learn your specific conditions and how you react to them. 
you are the best person to know what's going on with your body and in your mind. And it takes practice. It's not easy. It took me years to figure out my own conditions, my own medication, my cocktail, you know, spe specific things that help me. And it's really easy to say, but it's hard to do. So you need to learn, it, it behooves you to learn what helps. <laughs> I just wanted to scrub. <laughs> For example, I have panic attacks. And one of the worst things you can tell me is it's okay. Oh, it's God. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not okay. It's not okay. Not at that moment. It's not okay. Or, or calm just down. calm down. Yep. Okay. That's it's another good one. The worst thing you can say to me. It's not okay. <laughs> I am not okay at that moment. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I have my coping mechanisms. I have my grounding mechanisms. This one. This one is this good. One, you can feel your ears, you can feel your face, feel the ground, make the room stop spinning. Uh, use your, your, your soothing, your self-soothing, and it, it can help you get out of that moment. It can help you lose your train of thought. It can, <laughs> <laughs> it can help you recover your sense of normalcy, whatever your, your normal baseline is. Remind you where you are. Remind you where you are, who you're with, that, that, you know, it's not okay, but you can get through it. You are strong, you are brave, and you can continue. It will be okay. And, it, and for your okay, it will be okay. <laughs> for your okay. And in that moment, I know myself, I need a lot of reassurement that I'm not embarrassing that it is not shameful, and that I'm not a burden. Same here. Same here. I, that's the best thing you can do for me. Sometimes people need touch. Sometimes it helps me, sometimes it doesn't. And I need to communicate that to people whenever I can be hugged and whenever I can't. And that's being my own advocate is explaining that and verbalizing that. So if you know your triggers, you can combat them. And you are strong and you can deal with it. And in that moment, show yourself compassion. Show yourself love. Indulge in your coping mechanisms. Fight that shame. Fight that embarrassment. Fight it. You can do it. You're strong, you're brave, you can do it. And you remember, have a right to your emotions it's not it's not something that someone can take away from you it's not something that you need to be embarrassed about you have a right to that moment and you have a right to your coping mechanisms whatever that may be you have a right to it no one can take that away from you never let someone take that away from you when you learn how to cope and you have that moment it will be okay. So to add to that, uh, no one can know you better than you. And it can take time to get to know yourself and how your illnesses or conditions affect you and what you need to cope with them. So it's really important that you take the time to kind of figure, figure yourself out, which could take longer than expected. But at the end of the day, you're the only one who can do that for yourself. And uh, Illnesses and conditions affect people differently. You could have two people with the same exact illness and they're gonna have different symptoms and different medications will affect them differently. So knowing how your body reacts to it is extremely important and listening to what your body is telling you and also knowing that just because you know what's best for you does not mean that your heart wants to follow through. It can be a disconnect. All you guys. I love shit that's bad for me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be off. It's 18 plus, right? <laughs> shit. <laughs> My ears. <laughs> so, talk less. Smile more. <laughs> So it's important to know uh, moments when <laughs> it's important to know the moments when you can kind of cheat a little bit and when you really should stick.
stay on track, when it's smarter to stay on track. And for both of us at a con, when there's a lot of chaos and our schedules are kind of uprooting, it's really best if we stay on track with medications and diets and, and, and as much routine as we can. And, you know, but in normal life, if you're having a really good few days or a really good week, I mean, treat yourself. <laughs> treat yourself. <laughs> <laughs> don't get yourself sick. Yeah, treat yourself, don't get yourself sick. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so in addition to being very uh, honest and exploring yourself, it's important to be honest with the people around you, kind of your support system and uh, telling, telling, so if you have a friend or a couple friends you go to cons with, tell them what you need, tell them what you go through, tell them how your conditions affect you, and tell them what you need if you are having an episode or a panic attack, a panic attack or, or pain, whatever you experience. Talk, talk to your buddies about that experience and how they can help you because chances are they want to help you. So it's your job to educate them and equip them with the tools to help you because they don't know if you don't tell them. So just let them know how to take care of you um, and tell them when you need breaks and you're gonna find the people that are, that are, gonna, that are gonna help you through it. trust you and open up about what they need, listen to them. Yeah. Um, Advocates. 
So yeah, and we hold each other accountable, you know, take your meds. I forgot, no, take them now. Did you take this? I don't know. Have Go you take eaten it. breakfast? Have you eaten today? <laughs> Have you had water today? Yeah. And like you know, sometimes the nerves can get the best of you and you're not really hungry, but it's like mm -mm. Go eat. Go eat. Stop eat now. <laughs> so you just have to help take care of your buddies and uh, remind them what's mm. best for them because sometimes you have trouble taking care of yourself. So it helps to have someone who can kind of help you out. Um, like Coke. Like Coke. This one. This one. She really likes Coke. Her stomach really hates Coke. And in every con inevitably, inevitably she's like, I'm gonna get a Coke for dinner. And I'm like, you're gonna regret that decision. And she's like, no, nope, I'm getting a Coke. Regret. And I'm like, don't, don't, don't do it. Get this nice water. Get this nice water. How about it? The heart, brain, disconnect. Yeah, it's bad. So, it's bad. We just really work towards taking care of each other and keeping each other healthy at cons. Uh, yep. Because inevitably, at every single con, one or both of us has a health issue. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. Fortunately, we haven't had a crisis, but we have had some substantial episodes. Uh, and we just try to stave them off and avoid them as often as possible <clears throat> by taking care of each other. <laughs> um, so, we've talked about some health and psych issues, but you know what? We're here for full disclosure for you guys. And we're pretty much an open book, so let's talk about some of the things that we personally have to work with. Every day. Every day. Every second. So, I am bipolar too, and what that means, I'm on the bipolar spectrum. Someone that does not have bipolar, let's say, has a baseline of this. You might have con high, you might have tests, but you pretty much have a baseline. Someone who's bipolar one will have at least one episode of hypermania in their life, and at least one episode of MDD, which is major, major depressive disorder. And then there's me, and here's the baseline, and I'm like this. I am all over the place, and my medications regulate me wonderfully. But there's a stigma against bipolar, and it's very, very hard to talk about. People misdiagnose it in their head. They think it's schizophrenia. They think that it's um, multiple, personality. multiple personality disorder. They think it's catching. Some people think that you can catch a mental disorder, <laughs> and they don't want to be around you. Wait a minute. You or mean they you simply can't? do what? You mean you can't? <laughs> I'm not a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> but you play one at a con. But I play one at a con. So I'm pretty sure you can come give me a gentle hug and you won't catch my bipolar. I'm pretty sure. I'm willing to test the theory. So give her a hug. Give her a hug. Find out. How much are you? Oh, come up here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. You were so cute. <laughs> Thank you. I'm still getting now. Okay. So the next thing that I deal with is fibromyalgia. Hi, friend. Hi. <laughs> Again, it's completely misdiagnosed by people. They don't understand it. For me, it's widespread nerve pain. It's specifically in my feet, and in my legs, and in my hip. Cons are very hard, especially yeah. when I don't have my pain medication, and when I don't have my cane, because I'm 80. And then I have severe, dad, hey, dude, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mine's not nearly as that awesome, but, but it's um, foldable. It's foldable. <laughs> <laughs> I have one. <laughs> so um, I also have severe, severe, severe anxiety. Me too. I'm fantastic friends. <laughs> and I have MDD, which is major depressive disorder. I'm bipolar. I'm both. High five. <laughs> so PTSD, bipolar, yeah. ADHD. 
contamination. It basically means I'm a clinically diagnosed germaphobe. <laughs> Germs will find me, they will kill me, which is why I clean the rooms <laughs> so well. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody cough. No, nobody, oh, someone sneezed you know, in an elevator with us song. earlier. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I'm still not over it. So cons are really hard. There's people everywhere. You're touching things constantly. People um, are touching you. People are coughing and sneezing and sniffling. Mm -hmm. Keep your bodily fluids to yourself, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Learn proper and your smell. Yes. <laughs> Showers are free in the room. <laughs> that doesn't mean body spray. Yes. Right? Yes. So, like, the only option is body spray. Get out. Get out. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> so that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> There's also a stigma associated with OCD. A lot of people joke about it. A lot of people who are just kind of particular about their stuff are like, oh, ha ha, I'm so OCD about the things on my desk. And I'm like, mm, no. Oh, my sister's no. the same way. You don't, you don't want this. Uh, Believe you me, you don't. Stop no. it. You can, you can put things on your desk in a certain way and you don't want what's in my brain. Um, I also have a lot of anxiety. Uh, it's great. So kudos to y'all who are here with anxiety. Yeah. Uh, and my newest diagnosis is a stomach condition called gastroparesis. It basically means my stomach digests food incredibly slowly and inefficiently, so I'm, thank you. Uh, I, I go through a lot of pain and nausea and bloating and discomfort. It's fun. It happens. It happens. It happens. Yes. <laughs> uh, so a fun little anecdote, my GI doctor uh, used this lovely little blender analogy, and she was like, people with normal stomachs can go to Williams-Sonoma and get this fancy Vitamix blender, and that's their stomach, and they can crush anything, including the skulls of your enemies. But me, I went to Walmart and bought a shitty $10 blender that can't even crush ice, and that's what I have to live with for the rest of my life. Uh, wow. It's good. It's great. It's great. So how you like, my favorite thing ever is food, and now that's the enemy. It's, it's okay. It's all right. It's good. So... That's kind of the stuff that we have to go through yeah. um, in daily life at cons. It makes cons a struggle, but we really love coming here. We really love cosplaying. We really love being with our friends and goofing off and escaping adulthood and jobs and reality. So yes. we fight Definitely. through it. <laughs> we fight through it and we've developed these coping mechanisms and we're here and we go to a lot of cons and y'all can do it too. I mean, you're doing it. You're all here you're too. You're right. You're doing it right here, it's right great. now. It's great. So there's two things that we want to leave you with, with this panel. Number one, you're not your illness. You have X, you are not X. You are not anxiety, you are not fibro, you are not bipolar. You are Aaron who has bipolar. You are not the epitome of your illness. You are more than it. You are more than that. It is a part of you, it is not the whole of you. And another thing is, your condition is not a weakness. It's not a weakness, it's just different. And different does not equal weakness. Different is awesome. Different yeah. is awesome. We are all different. We need warriors for the win. <laughs> for the win. So we have, we only have five minutes. Oh, we only have five minutes? We intended to have more time so we could have a discussion, but if anyone has any questions or a quick little tip or a little quick little story, yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Our first con? Oh, that was a long time ago. 
My first con was with my ex-boyfriend. I was undiagnosed and I had what I thought was a heart attack. I, my heart was racing, my palms were sweating, my head hurt, my body hurt. There was, I had over sensory information coming in. I had no idea what was going on. I was terrified. And my boyfriend at the time was absolutely no help. He was the calm down, it's okay, you're There's embarrassing. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. 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 First con was fun, but I learned a lot about agoraphobia. I learned a lot about anxiety and I learned a lot about myself. It was difficult, but necessary. And I'm glad I went through it because I am here with the information that I'm armed with now, with the information that I can arm and support with my people. And I'm glad I went through that now. At the time, I thought I was dying. <laughs> These people are going to kill me, yes. I, I have more of a question though. Do you have any tips because my anxiety I literally get nauseous and I can't eat, but I need to eat. I get that too. <laughs> like that happened to me this morning, and I had then I had to do reg. That was I, yesterday. It was so bad. We're, I the we're both actually on a drug called um, Zofran. 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 It's and great for nausea. It's great for you nausea. I, love that I, I need to throw up too. You know what? I'm okay. I also love my migraine medication. If I'm so I'm done. Oh no! <laughs> medication, medication, yeah, medication. medication. This is also my first con that I've stayed in a hotel. Mm. Well, I'm glad you have a good quiet place, though. Yeah. When when you are feeling a little nauseous and you know that you should eat, I'd say start with some water and mm -hmm. sip it slowly. Find a quiet place, and once you start to calm down, eat something small. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, do you guys live in the Dallas area? I yes. do Fort Worth. Plano. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hush. <laughs> <laughs> there, at, I don't know if you have bipolar or whatever. I don't. But there is a group uh, run, um, the one we go to is on Mondays. But it's run by Mental Health America. But it's Mental Health America. Oh, fantastic. And it's BDSA, Bipolar Depression Support Alliance Group. And they're all over the, the DFW area. Oh yeah, they're all Could over. all of y'all hear her, what she said? Yeah. Awesome, that's great. They're, um, they're all over the, the DFW area. They're free to go to, no insurance needed. That's no that is, needed. That is fantastic. It and is. it's just a peer-to-peer -peer support group. Love it. Great. Yes, sir. Was one of the things you said so that you just throw out a tip? That yes, a please, tip? share your tips. Yes, so, please. There's a, there's a guy on YouTube named Dan Bowler. Totally revolutionized my like thought process. Fantastic. So, and I like there were times where I would go through life and I better say this. All of a sudden, like, like what the hell is going on? Yeah. And, yeah. And so, uh, have you ever had a chance to listen to him, Dan Moeller? Dan Moeller. Dan Moeller. Okay. Totally revolutionized my thought process. Great. Fantastic. Yes. Any you love. Oh, sorry, could you speak up just a little? It is really a question it's more of a my story for her. Okay. I guess for a while now I've been like dealing with my car and depression on environment. But going through the same thing is still important.
Drum There's a couple back here that have it. Oh, do you want to enter real quick? In the door. I don't even know if qualify. Yeah. Go throw your names in there. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. I think I gave him thirty. They've got the pen and paper back there. Yeah. Oh, you, do you mind if he uses it real quick? Oh. <laughs> yes. I have a pen and you don't. <laughs> I have a pen, but you can't use it. I have a pen, but it's only for autographs. <laughs> There should be more paper. Yeah, there's another piece of paper. That's my pen. He's got paper. Oh, she's got. I'm just going on top of it. That's true. Awesome. Awesome song. It's kind of distracting. Yep. All right. Okay.